सो टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद अ चैप्टर ऑफ जोग्राफी लेसन नंबर थ्री फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेनेज फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेनेज वी आर गोइंग टू सी एज आई टोल्ड अर्लियर दैट फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेनेज ऑफ ब्राजील एंड इंडिया लास्ट टाइम आई एज आई सेड इन दैप्टर फिजियोग्राफी एंड ड्रेनेज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू सी how uh, physical features uh, of india and brazil are different how they are similar in some manner that we are going to see in this chapter so first of all we will see how the what is the meaning of physiography physiography means generally a simple thing we can understand the physical feature of land the physical appearance of the land i would say so this is how we are going to start physiography and drainage drainage means what the basic meaning of drainage means what the how the rivers and the water are flowing throughout the country because of slopes being generated because of the plateau or uh, hilly mountain area those we are going to see in this region so basic thing physical feature physiography means physical feature the physical structure of the land and drainage pattern means what that how the rivers are flowing Uh, from our country towards the ocean or towards the sea this is how we are going to start the first of all we are going to start with the india so for this chapter we will be having two videos first regarding india's physical feature and drainage and second regarding the brazil physical feature and drainage first of all we will start the physical feature of india physical feature means what the physical structure as i told earlier physical structure means what ki uh, there may be mountains there may be plain lands there may be plateau region there may be peninsula region there may be island group uh, there can be the coastal land and the coastal plain as if so we are going to see how the physical feature of land been <coughs> described in this chapter and how we are going to learn it so first of all we will have an overall outlook how the physico <coughs> physiographic structure of india see so first first of all physiographic structure we are going to learn is himalaya Himalaya is nothing but uh, towards the north of India, towards over here. We will see uh, slowly, slowly. I will just make you understand. This is only a rough outlook. Uh, the physical feature of India include Himalaya. Second, it include the North Indian Plain. Third, includes the peninsula, the uh, coastal part, and the island group. The so first of all, we are going to see Himalayan system. How Himalayan systems are been there, and how they are been uh, generated over a period of time. how the mountain system has been generated that we are going to see we will start with the himalaya 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 extend from pamir kron what is where is pamir kron i will make you understand see india here towards the west side north west pakistan and over and above the pakistan there is afghanistan and over afghanistan there is a country named tajikistan so from tajikistan the himalaya extend towards the east from where does it start it start from the pamir kron in tajikistan and it extend towards the east so this is the first starting point of himalaya the second point we are going to see second point that is that the himalaya is the youngest fold mountain in the world himalaya is the youngest fold mountain in the world so in india himalaya extend from jammu kashmir towards the arunachal pradesh in india <coughs> himalaya extend from jammu kashmir towards the arunachal pradesh so some uh, question might be <coughs> getting arose into your mind that whether it is a single mountain system or what kind of thing so we will make the things clear see himalaya is not a single mountain system we are going to see single mountain system means what there is only a single mountain but no himalaya is not a single mountain system himalaya is a series of parallel ranges from south towards the north the parallel ranges from the south towards the north the parallel ranges are going to be as if like this way i will make you understand so himalaya see you have just got the things clear the himalaya extend from jammu kashmir from here from the sikkim over here and arunachal pradesh so and slowly towards the little towards the south parallel ranges means what i will make you understand parallel ranges so how parallel ranges himalaya is not a single mountain system as i told earlier it is a parallel range of system the parallel range of system means what there is a mountain over here which are in smaller heights this is the smaller one and this smaller height ones are known as shivalik this mountain systems are known as shivalik next to shivalik towards the north there is a mountain system over here and it, they are in 
little of greater heights i would say it, it is a if this mountain is of height of 100 meters then this would be the height of 150 to 200 meter means what this is the most youngest one and this is the little older one as compared to the south one see this one the youngest one is known as shivalik the second one the second one is known as lesser himalaya the second one this one is known as lesser himalaya this mountain is known as lesser himalaya next to shivalik is the lesser himalaya and next to shivalik are the greater himalayas or known as himadri ranges and after that those mountain ranges over here are karakoram himalayas are also known as trans himalaya so what we can understand from this himalaya is not a single mountain system is a, it is a parallel range of system parallel range of system the southernmost is known as shivalik next next to shivalik is the uh, lesser himalayas next to lesser himalayas are the greater himalayas are known as himadri and after that it is known there are there is a trans himalayan system so what we can understand as we grow from south to north it is young to old respectively the southern more the southern most the shivalik is the most youngest and the trans himalaya is the most oldest so what we can understand to as we grow from south to north the mountain systems are young to old respectively in india the himalayas are divided into three part in india the himalaya is divided into three part the first himalayan part is known as western himalayas western himalayas means what the western himalaya means jammu kashmir himalayas the jammu kashmir himalayas means this part this hima this himalayas are known as western himalaya this part of himalaya is known as western himalayas western himalayas are also known as jammu kashmir himalayas second second is kumayun himalayas kumayun himalayas is somewhere over here kumayun himalaya is somewhere over here and after that third part the third division of india is known as assam himalayas is known as assam himalayas assam himalayas is over here this fire this himalaya eastern himalayas eastern himalayas is also known as assam himalayas and assam himalayas is over here so what we understood so we will have a short recap of himalayas once again so himalaya himalaya mountain system extend from pamir north in tajikistan towards the east Himalaya is not a single parallel range of sir. it is not a single mountain it is a parallel series of mountain so the youngest one is known as shivalik next to shivalik is lesser next to lesser is greater and after that it is known as trans himalaya the as we go from south to north it is young to old respectively in india himalaya extend from jammu kashmir towards the assam in india it is divided into three part the first part is known as western himalayas known as jammu kashmir himalaya second part is known as central himalayas known as kumayun himalaya the third part is known as eastern himalaya is known as assam himalaya this is how the himalayan part has been derived first we have studied about the himalayas now we are going to study about the north indian plain north indian plain see how plains are formed a plains are formed due to the depositional work of the river which river are prominent in india first we are going to see it. which rivers are prominent in india you might be knowing ganga yamuna those rivers are very much prominent in india uh, as far as the north indian plain is concerned so first of all we are going to see how uh, we will take a first rough idea how the river flow in a particular direction if you are going to see the ganga starts as if like here and it flow towards this way and go as if like into the uh, bangladesh and end into the bay of bengal similarly the tributary of ganga yamuna also starts and go and meet over ganga and finally they merge into the bay of bengal so what we are going to see the north indian plain see north indian plains are divided into two part the north indian plains are divided into two part now i will make you understand which will be the first part and which is the second part so here we go so before starting the north indian plain we are going to see there is an arauli ranges over here there is an arauli ranges over here this is arauli arauli range arauli range is from starting from south of uh, it is starting from the north of the gujarat and it extend towards the rajasthan until the delhi ranges how the things are going to be i will make you understand north indian plain see north indian plain we will first define what is north indian plain so the part lying the for example north indian plain the part lying to the south of himalaya the area lying to the south of himalaya matlab himalayas ke niche the part lying to the south of himalaya and 
towards the north of peninsula the part lying between the north between the himalayas and peninsula this part is known as north indian plain so what is north indian plain the area lying between the himalayas and the peninsula the area lying between himalayan peninsula peninsula aur himalaya ye dono ke beech mein jo area hai usko kya bolenge north indian plain so the part lying between the himalayas in the north and the peninsula in the south is known as north indian plain so similarly from where it extend it extend from rajasthan see north indian plain extend from rajasthan over here and it extend towards the assam in the east why assam is a plain land formed by the depositional work of river brahmaputra in india so himalaya so what we are going to see north indian plain north indian plain extend from rajasthan and punjab in the west towards the assam in the east and north indian plain extend from rajasthan and punjab in the west towards the assam in the east and how they are extended we are going to see further see there is an arauli mountain over here the part towards the east see arauli mountain over here so east part means this part east wala part means we are going to see this part this part is eastern part of the arauli this is the eastern part of the arauli the whole part is east side of arauli so the part lying to the east of arauli the part lying toward the east of arauli is formed due to the depositional work of river ganga and river yamuna the part lying to the east of arauli part lying to the east of arauli is formed due to the depositional work of river ganga and river yamuna therefore it is differently described as a ganga river plain or ganga river basin so the east side of arauli sloping towards the east side the east side arauli ka east side arauli's east side is sloping towards east and is formed by the depositional work of river ganga and yamuna therefore it is differently described as a ganga river basin so this is the eastern part we have studied now what we are going to see now we are going to see the western part the part lying to the west of arauli the part lying to the west of arauli means what this part the part lying to the west of arauli the part lying to the west of arauli is having the slope towards the west matlab beech mein yahan pe dekho aisa mountain hai beech mein yahan pe beech mein aisa mountain hai mountain ho gaya to is taraf ka jo slope rahega it will be towards the east and is taraf ka slope rahega so it will be towards the west the western side the western side of the arauli mountain is sloping towards the west the western side of arauli is sloping towards the west therefore it is sloping towards the west and most of the part of the western side of the arauli is formed due to is formed by the desert it is totally a deserted area and most of the rajasthan is occupied by the desert western side of arauli western sides of arauli is occupied by the desert and most of the rajasthan is occupied by the desert and that desert is known as great indian desert thar desert or marustal in a common name idea so how the things are going to be we will make you understand see Arauli mountain eastward side sloping towards is formed by the depositional work of river Ganga and river Yamuna western side western side is mostly a part of desert and desert been extended and that desert is extending towards the whole of Rajasthan and that desert is also extending towards the north near the Punjab plain see here it is the somewhere Punjab plain it is extending towards the Punjab plain the desert is extending from the north or near the gujarat towards the punjab plain this is the whole marustal area and this is the desert in india so what we can understand from this is the part that north indian plain is divided into two parts towards the eastern side and towards the western side eastern side formed by, formed by the depositional work of river ganga western side is formed by the desert western side is sloping towards west eastern side, side is sloping towards the east this is how the things are formed so the punjab plain we will talk about the punjab plain punjab plain is mostly formed by the depositional work of river satluj where is satluj there is a river satluj which is flowing towards in this direction so punjab plain is formed by the depositional work of river satluj as the depositional work is prominently in the eastern side and in the punjab plain agricultural activity is very much practice in this area as far as agriculture activity is concerned it is the basic thing being done why because the alluvium brought by the river settles and the soil soil become fertile same thing happened in the punjab area 
in Punjab region, the surplus any tributary settles the alluvium and this way the whole activity goes on and the agriculture activities is being practiced. So, as we completed the two parts, the Himalaya and the North Indian plate. Now we will move towards the third part of the chapter. Third part means what? The peninsula. We are going to see the peninsula. So what is peninsula? I will make you understand. Peninsula is a physical land, I would say, which is covered three sides by the water. The peninsula is a region which is covered three sides by the water body. The land which is covered three sides by the water body, that land is known as peninsula. Similarly, if you are going to see in India, the this, this very much part, this much part, if you are going to see the lower part as if, this, this side is covered by the Bay of Bengal, this side is covered by the Arabian Sea, this side is covered by Bay of Bengal, this side is covered by the Arabian Sea and southern region is covered by the Indian Ocean. So, peninsula is this area. How we would define the peninsula region? The area lying to the south of North Indian Plain. The area lying to the south of North Indian Plain and it is tapering. Tapering is making a cone shape a particular type, kind of thing. So, the area lying to the south of North Indian Plain. North Indian Plain is south mein. Or jo south ki taraf tapper kar Indian is known as Indian Peninsula. So, in Indian Peninsula, what we are going to see, there are there is the Arauli Mountains in the north. Peninsula region may Arauli Mountains hai, wo important part play karte. Peninsula may there is a Arauli Mountain over here. There are many series of plateau ranges also being formed in this area. If you are going to see the Malwa Plateau over here. Various kinds of plateau are being developed over here. This is Chota Nagpur Plateau, this is Malwa Plateau, Bundelkhand Plateau. Various kinds of plateau are being there. So, in peninsula region, there is a Rauli mountain in the north. There are many plateau region which is bordering the peninsula region. See, this Chota Nagpur Plateau is also bordering the uh, peninsula region, the Malwa Plateau, the Bundelkhand Plateau. So, various plateau are bordering the peninsula region. In, uh, excluding this thing, there are two mountain systems are there. The first one is known as Vindhya Ranges. Vindhya Ranges are there over here and toward the south of Vindhya Ranges, there is Satpura Ranges. So, these are the two mountain systems which is in the central part of the peninsula. So, peninsula, peninsula, the area to the south of North Indian Plain, tapering towards Indian Ocean is known as Indian Peninsula. In Peninsula, the major mountain system is Arauli Mountain Range and there are series of plateau bordering the plain. Which are the plateau? Chota Nagpur Plateau, Malwa Plateau, Bundelkhand Plateau. And after it, there are two mountain systems which is in the central part Vindhya and Satpura. There are two different mountain systems are also bordering the Vindhya. No, not Vindhya, I would say the Peninsula. From the western side, there is a western guard which borders the peninsula over here and toward the eastern side there is or what we would say the eastern guards over here. So what we can understand from this, the area to the south of North Indian Plain, this is the North Indian Plain as we studied earlier, to the south of North Indian Plain is the peninsula. The area lying to the south of North Indian Plain and tapering toward Indian Ocean is known as Indian Peninsula. So fourth part we are going to see, the fourth part is going to be the coastal plain. Coastal plain in India divided into two parts, the western coastal plain and the eastern coastal plain. The coastal plain toward the Arabian Sea and toward the west side of the peninsula is known as western coastal plain and the coastal plain toward the east of peninsula and which is bordering toward the Bay of Bengal is known as eastern coastal plain. So, two parts is western coastal plain and eastern coastal plain. Western coastal plain starts from the run of Kutch towards the south and toward the Kanyakumari. And eastern coastal plain start from the south of West Bengal towards the south towards the Kanyakumari. So eastern coastal plain and western coastal plain. Eastern and western coastal plain have uh, what you would say dissimilarities between them. Why there is a dissimilarities between them? I will make you understand. See, in western area, in the western part, there is a western ghats over here. Western ghats have higher, uh, what you would say, the altitude of the Western Ghats is comparatively higher than the altitude of the Eastern Ghats. Western Ghats, we are going to see as it like this way, for example, this is the Western Ghats, then what happens, as it like when there is a precipitation or rainfall, the water this way goes and goes slowly and meets the Bay of Bengal. But simultaneously at the same time, here in the Arabian Sea region, the slope is very steep 
there is a steep slope and here it is a gentle slope so the water flow slowly over here and the water here flow very fast so because of this water flow here fast and here very slowly so what we can understand from this due to the steep slope the water is very fast therefore in the western ghat there are estuary estuary means so there is a large river mouth if you want to understand estuary you can understand see this is a large river mouth large river mouth in short this is the sea arabian sea and this will be the large river mouth if you want to understand this will be the large river mouth this part will be the river mouth this part will be the river mouth simultaneously in the bay of bengal see the slope is very gentle over this side so gentle slope so river will be flowing very slowly towards this way as the river will be flowing slowly what are you going to experience see as the river is flowing slowly so this will be the coastal region the sea will offer resistance the sea will offer resistance so as the sea will offer the resistance the water will flow back again and it will be forming a distributary so in this way a distributary will be formed as the distributary form there are many deltas formed in the eastern coastal region in eastern coastal region due to the gentle slope the water will flow slowly towards the sea but sea will resist that water flow and the water will come back again a little and it will form a distributary to join again to the sea so in this way the delta region is formed in the eastern ghats in the eastern plain i would say and a large river mouth is formed in the arabian sea region this is the major dissimilarity between the eastern ghats and the western ghats one more thing we are going to see that eastern ghats is over here eastern ghats there is a what do you say the width of the eastern coastal region the width of the eastern coastal region is very much high as compared to the western ghats why the things are going to i will make you understand see eastern ghats and western ghats western ghats are very much near towards the coastal area western ghats are very much near to the coastal area therefore western coast is rocky why because the sayadri mountains is very much close to the western coastal region therefore the western coast is rocky and eastern coast the eastern ghats is very much uh, not very much i would say uh, comparatively it is away from the coastal area therefore the width of the eastern coastal region is very much high than the width of the western coast as of over here why see basic thing to understand western ghat is close towards the sea therefore the western coast is rocky eastern ghats are not very much close towards the sea therefore the eastern coastal plain is not very much rocky it is what do you say a major the width of the eastern ghats eastern coast i would say it is very much high as compared to the western ghat over here because of the steep slope towards the western side over here arabian sea over here the water will flow very swiftly therefore swift river fast flowing river will be, will be formed as if like this short and swift river will be formed but simultaneously towards the eastern side because of the gentle slope the river will be growing very slowly as the river approaches towards the sea the sea will offer resistance as sea will offer resistance the water will come back a little again and then it will form a distributary and this distributary triangular network of water will be forming a delta this is how the eastern ghats Uh, are responsible for the uh, are very much responsible how it is responsible because it is much away from the sea therefore the breadth is higher and all simultaneously the western ghat it is very much close towards the sea therefore it is rocky in nature western ghat is rocky in nature and the eastern ghat there are deltas are formed and in western ghat we are going to see the large river mouth this is the difference between the eastern coastal region and the western coastal region so last part we are going to see the island group the island groups in india are divided into two part arabian sea and the bay of bengal the island in the arabian sea are known as lakshadweep island and island in the bay of bengal are known as andaman nicobar island lakshadweep island where is it the lakshadweep island is over here lakshadweep island is over here it is offshore of the malabar coast and malabar coast is in the kerala lakshadweep island we are talking about lakshadweep island then it, it uh, those islands are all atoll island those are all coral island there is no volcanic island formed over here there are many small island been available in a huge quantity but the size of the island is not very much the area is not very much big as far as uh, andaman nicobar island is concerned the no andaman nicobar islands are also divided into two part the northern group is known as andaman and the lower group is southern group is known as 
the nicobar island group uh, indira point the southernmost tip of india is under the nicobar island group in the interior of andaman nicobar there are huge hills and there in the interior there is a hill known as barren island the barren island is the only active volcano in india in nicobar there are many atoll island been also been available lakshadweep island at the top of the submerged mountain whereas the andaman nicobar islands are the volcanic island so as we have completed the physiography of india now we will move towards the drainage pattern drainage pattern as we can understand the basic thing i will make you understand for drainage pattern drainage pattern means what the way through which the river and other water bodies flow through a, a country and meet the ocean or uh, the larger water body i would say so first of all in drainage pattern what we are going to see is that the himalayan drainage and the peninsula drainage first we are we will study now the himalayan drainage himalayan drainage are also divided into two part the first part the area not area i would say the river meeting the arabian sea and other part we are going to see the river meeting the bay of bengal the river meeting the arabian sea is known as indus river system indus river system is also known as sindhu river system we will move towards the diagram so from here we can conclude that the major river system which flowing to the arabian sea major river system which going into the arabian sea is indus river system indus river system is also known as sindhu river system sindhu river system as we see chenab jhelum ravi des satluj are the major tributary of river indus as we can see from the diagram that jhelum chenab ravi des are almost parallel to each other one thing we can understand that as they are moving parallel their flow will be fast why their flow will be fast because they are moving from the steep slopes of the himalayas now now we will study the satluj part why the satluj part is important because the river satluj is an important as far as punjab plain is concerned why because as satluj river originating from the uh, glacier of mansarovar the river uh, satluj is originating from the mansarovar glacier as the glacier melt it starts flowing towards the western side and uh, due to the western slope and it form the river satluj Bias is the main tributary of river Satluj. As it flow from the Punjab, Punjab plains are highly fertile because of the alluvium being getting deposited over there. As alluvium is getting deposited, agriculture is largely practiced in the Punjab plain. Satluj river from the plains of Punjab. And for your information, the world one of the highest dam of the world, Bhakra Nangal Dam, is also been built in Punjab, Haryana, and that part is known as Bhakra Nangal Dam on on the river Satluj. now what we can understand is from that that time to time river indus meet many smaller rivers satluj bias ravi chenab and over the period of time they cross our border of a country enter into the pakistan and the this river meet and after meeting this river the indus river flow through the pakistan and meet the arabian sea so this is how the himalayan drainage including himalayan drainage which includes the river going into the arabian sea now we will see the himalayan drainage which is moving towards the bay of bengal so the major river meeting the bay of bengal is river ganga ganga has two major tributaries river yamuna and river brahmaputra brahmaputra river has three different name i will make you understand which three different name while flowing through himalayas while the river brahmaputra is flowing through himalaya it is known as river sain while flowing through himalaya the river is known as sain and while crossing the himalayas while crossing the himalaya it is known as river dihan while crossing the himalaya it is known as river dihan then the eastward flow of the river then the river starts flowing eastward from assam and that eastward flow is known as brahmaputra and that eastward flow is known as brahmaputra as we can see river ganga receives many other river as its tributary as and when we can understand slowly slowly river ganga meet many other uh, many other small river meets ganga river brahmaputra meet the river ganga in the lower reaches so as we can understand is that in the lower reaches of ganga brahmaputra meets yamuna also meets the river ganga but not in the lower reaches before uh, there is a sangam over there so what we can understand towards the lower reaches of ganga brahmaputra meets so west bengal a state of india and the bangladesh the whole country formed the Largest delta of the world, and that delta is known as Sundarban. 
time to time ganga river also receive many of the river from the peninsula region so this is how the overall volume of water receiving into the uh, river ganga increases and over the period of time what we can understand is that the discharge of river ganga increases and it form delta in the west bengal and it form delta into the bangladesh and forming the world largest delta and that is known as sundarban so the other part of the drainage system other part of the drainage system is peninsular drainage so before starting the peninsular drainage one recap will be done see himalayan drainage himalayan drainage uh, <coughs> ganga river system and sindhu river system ganga and sindhu river ganga originating from gangotri and uh, yamuna originating from yamunotri so what happened is that those all rivers were starting from the glacier as the snow melt the they used to receive water during summer season and during rainfall they were rain fed and over the period of time they used to be perennial which river system himalayan drainage system river were perennial but now in the peninsular river uh, drainage system what we are going to see is that he, these rivers are seasonal rivers they are fed only during rainy season so as the summer season come they dry up and form the seasonal river system so again in the peninsular drainage system there are two types one meeting towards the arabian sea and one meeting towards the bay of bengal first we will see the river meeting the arabian sea the river meeting the arabian sea as shown in the figure we can see is that river nuni river mahi river sabarmati river narmada tapi and various other short river first of all i will make you understand the one which are coming from the northern direction as we can see from here is that river luni which is starting from the slope western slope of the arauli mountain the luni is starting from the south western slope of the arauli mountain and it is going in a somewhat northeast to southwest direction and it end up into the catchment area of arabian sea and the catchment area of arabian sea is known as run of kutch so luni river starting from the south western slope of arauli south slope of arauli and moving in the direction of south northeast to southwest and end up into the catchment area of arabian sea and that is known as run of kutch another river starting from the southern slope of arauli is river sabarmati river sabarmati somewhat flowing in the north south direction and end up into the gulf of khambar here it is the gulf of khambar and here it is the gulf of kutch so sabarmati mostly flowing north south direction and end up into the gulf of khambar another river starting into the northeast direction not flowing from northeast to southwest direction is the river mahi so in a peninsular region as we studied earlier is that there are two mountain system in the peninsula vindhya and satpura so narmada and tapi slow through the rift valley of the narmada uh, rift valley of vindhya and satpura rift valley means what mean there are two mountains side by side and between the two mountain the river flow making a huge gorges understanding everybody so this is how the vindhya vindhya and satpura and the river narmada and tapi moves through the uh, rift valley of uh, vindhya and satpura so as we can understand there are western ghat over here western ghat from western ghat what we can conclude is that see for example this is the western ghats western ghats is forming a major water divide how for example this is the western ghat and if there is a rainfall over here precipitation rainfall over here so what happened the water coming through this side will go this way and will meet bay of bengal and what in uh, and water accumulating from here will meet the arabian sea so <coughs> west bay uh, western ghats west bay western ghats are forming water divide are forming water divide western ghat is forming a water divide between the river flowing towards the arabian sea and river flowing towards the bay of bengal river flowing towards the arabian sea we will talk of the western ghat as the slope is very steep slope is steep so a short and swift river kind of thing will, will be getting developed and short and swift river will be formed and it will be forming a large river mouth the formation of short and swift river starts from the south of gujarat area towards the kerala south gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka kerala short and swift river kind of thing is being available in the south gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka and kerala short and swift why because of the steep slope of the western ghat of the western side of the western ghat and 
river flowing into the bay of bengal as the western ghat western ghat is forming a major water divide as the water which accumulate or which flow through the eastern side of the western ghat eastern side of the western ghat for example this is the eastern side of western ghat and this is the western side of western ghat so river flow into the west eastern side of the western ghat flow to the gentle slope and move towards the bay of bengal as we can see the northeast part of the peninsula river manadi manadi form in the northeast part of the peninsula and drain over this way and form a big delta in the northeastern part of the peninsula so as we come down we can see river godavari godavari is the second largest river of river according to the catchment area it is the ganga of the peninsula it is said that the river godavari is the ganga of the peninsula as the river godavari flow and it meet in the delta region of river krishna and godavari uh, are coming together so what we can understand is that the river godavari flow toward the eastern slope of western ghat and making a way from the eastern ghat it is going towards the what we would say the bay of bengal one thing can be noted is that because of the many river going to the bay of bengal the eastern ghat is been divided it is not a continuous range because of the many river the eastern ghat has been fragmented so one thing to be understood Gang, uh, godavari godavari is known as the ganga of the peninsula another comes to the south of godavari is river krishna so river krishna bhima and tungabhadra are the major tributary bhima and river tungabhadra are the major tributary of river krishna and toward the south of river krishna is the river kaveri kaveri is the river which flows from the karnataka and tamil nadu and this is how we can understand the peninsula drainage peninsula drainage one going to the arabian sea and other going toward the bay of bengal going toward the arabian sea first of all luni river starting from the arauli mountains towards the slow, towards the western side and flowing somewhat in north east to south west and going to the catchment area of himalaya sabarmati river mostly flowing from north to south direction going to the gulf of khamba and mahi river mostly flowing to north east to south west direction and going towards the gulf of khamba river narmada and tapi flowing to the rift valley of uh, rift valley of vindhya and satpura and meeting the river uh, meeting the arabian sea into the gulf of khamba and there are many short and swift river formed due to the western slope of the western ghat and short river been formed from the south gujarat to kerala and bay of bengal manadi in the north eastern part of the peninsula towards the south of manadi is godavari towards the south of godavari is river krishna and towards the south of krishna it is kaveri so this is how the peninsula drainage is being completed